Now I want to speak to you about breakaway gaps. This is the second most typical type of gap that we see, and it's personally one of my favorites from a trading perspective. A breakaway gap is basically when a breakout or a breakdown is occurring via a gap, okay? So in other words, maybe our market closes right here today, it's still within the range, and today we are opening up above this resistance level. We are having our breakout occur via a gap. That is a breakaway gap. Breakaway gaps tend to lead to what's called a gap and go situation, which is the opposite of a gap fill. A gap fill we just discussed is when the price comes down and fills the gap. A gap and go is when your stock trends in the direction of the gap itself. Once again, like with any type of gap, to understand this, we want to understand the supply and demand implications that actually can create this phenomenon. Okay? So, Let's think about it. Well, let's start the exact same way. Let's say you were long last night. Market has a big gap up this morning. Guess what? You're still inclined to probably book some profit. So there will be some potential selling pressure from people who are already involved saying, oh, this gap is great. Let me put some money in my pocket. But what if you were flat last night? You're flat, you've been studying this stock, you've been studying this market, you've been seeing the range that it's in, you've been being very patient, you're saying, I don't wanna be involved in this battle. This is one of the things that you hear me say all the time in the virtual trading floor on the pro desk. I don't wanna be involved in the battle between buyers and sellers, I just wanna be on the side of the winner, right? So you've been patiently waiting. You've been saying to yourself, I can't wait to buy this breakout of this resistance. And it got up here the first time and you couldn't wait to buy resistance, but it never triggered you in. And it got up here the second time, you couldn't wait to buy and it never triggered you in. And then this next time it's up here, you wanna buy, same thing, it never triggers you in. Every single day, maybe let's put a price on our resistance level. Maybe our resistance level is $50. Every single time it's been getting near 50, you've been, I can't wait to buy the breakout of the stock. The chart looks so beautiful, I love this consolidation. And now guess what? It gaps past that price that you've been wanting to buy. And you have no position. What are you inclined to do? Well, the answer to that question actually depends on a couple of factors. It depends on just how big this gap is over the resistance level. And it also depends on kind of the type of trader you, have, you are and the type of personality that you have. But many market participants are going to be inclined to chase this price especially if the gap above where you want it to buy is not too bad. Like maybe you know, your resistance is 50, if this thing's gapped up to $51, maybe you're not coming in and buying at 51, it's too, too big. But if this was gapping up to $50.15, you might say, okay, I really want it to buy 50, but I'll take 50, 15, I'm in. So people who are flat, but have been wanting to buy, are very likely to come in and to chase this price. That's buying. What about our short sellers? That sh same short seller who's been so consistently short every time this thing has tested resistance, maybe that's been their out, maybe their stop loss has been at that $50. Now all of a sudden, that stock is gapping past $50, which is you know, their stop loss. That means that that short seller is potentially about to lose even more and they game planned to risk. And by the way, that's one of the big dangers of swing trading. One of the biggest dangers of swing trading is that you can have a stock gap past your out, especially if news occurs or something like that, and you can lose even more than you were originally game planning to risk. And, and we've got rules for that too. That'll be a whole separate lesson. Um, but that short seller is gonna panic. Oh my God, I thought I was just gonna get out $50. Now it's gapping up to $50 and some change. I'm losing even more than I was thought I was risking. I gotta get out, I gotta get out, I gotta get out. So what tends to occur in the breakaway gap situation is these shorts panicking out of their position and these new longs who are entering the market tend to outweigh the profit-taking sellers that are coming in. So sure, there's probably gonna be a lot of opening volatility here, especially because your small time frame is gonna open up very extended. It's another thing that 
you know, we're paying attention to constantly in the ProDesk virtual trading floor that I'm managing. But overall, that volatility is usually gonna lead to higher prices, it's gonna lead to a gap and go, so breakaway gaps lead to continuation in that direction. What about a breakaway gap to the downside? Well, guess what? It's gonna be the exact same thing as far as supply and demand goes, but in the opposite, right? So here's my big support level. Maybe that support level's been $30, it's been constantly holding, you know, market closes somewhere in the range, and the next day, the market gaps below it. What's gonna happen? Same thing, most likely this is going to lead to a gap and go to the downside. This time, the longs who have been in, in this thing consistently, maybe $30 was their stop loss, it's gapping down to 29.75. Those longs are panic selling out of their position. Oh my God, I thought I was only risking at $30, now it opened up at 29.75, I'm losing even more than I thought, this is terrible, get me out, get me out, get me out, I gotta get out of my position. Selling, right? Uh, what about people who are momentum traders who wanted to short this breakdown? They've been wanting to short $30. It just never triggered, never triggered. It's now gapping past $30, it's gapping to below it. They are potentially inclined to chase their short sale to the downside. What about the people who are already short? You're already short, it gaps down big in your favor? Okay, fine. They're inclined to come in and book some profit that's buying. Same thing here, the selling of panic long sellers and new short sellers entering the market is going to tend to outweigh that new buying that's coming in and a breakaway gap to the downside can oftentimes lead to a gap and go, which is gonna be continuation in the direction of that gap. It just puts enough people out of the money, they're panic selling out, that you get continuation lower. All right, gang, so that was uh, today's lesson where we talked about gaps, specifically the breakaway gap and the common gap, which is the two most typical type of gap that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. If you like what you're learning on these lessons, if you like this new format that I did today, give me a like, give me a subscribe, check out those links in the description where you can learn to become a part of my team of professional traders. See everybody next time. Do you want to trade with me and my team in real time? Right now, we are offering 75% off on your first month of my virtual trading floor at the ProDesk. ProDesk is usually $195 a month, but right now, we're giving you the opportunity to get involved for just 49 bucks. As part of your ProDesk subscription, you're gonna have access to my team's daily pre-market meeting, afternoon meeting, and our daily group Q&A session. So, Click the link in my description to learn more.